Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Celestia Radio's Canterlot Crossfade. Get your bodies ready, ponies. It's time for the most profane, unadulterated, uncensored two hours your mind can fucking handle. Just two dudes talking news, events, music, and what the fuck ever else we can think of. Canterlot Crossfade, starting right now on Celestia Radio. And welcome, every pony, to another episode of the Candelot Crossfade here on Celestia Radio. That's right, it is time for another wonderful episode. Last week we had our premiere, and this week we've got a great show for you lined up. Joining me, uh, of course, you know DJ K Brony. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, DJ K here. Great to be on for another Candelot Crossfade. That's right, and myself, you guys know me. Uh, co-host of this show and owner of Celestia Radio, DJ Shamrock. Um, man, we've got we got a, a pretty awesome one lined up for it today. Um, you know, we were we were kind of scrambling at first to decide um, what topic we would do this week, and um, then we thought, you know what? There's that really cool thing coming up. Um, you know, and, and, and what is that thing called, KB? Well, uh, that thing is called Musiquestria. Um, you know, relatively, it's, it's a little bit of a trickier word, but I'm going with music Equestria. And, uh, in case you're not familiar with what that, uh, word means to you and what it means to the fandom, that is the newly, uh, starting, trying to get funded project put on by a whole bunch of different musicians, both electronic and acoustic. And, uh, you know, all of the like here in the fandom, trying to put on a full scale Brony tour across the nation to perform at a whole bunch of different places, some big cities, um, just sounds like an awesome project, and we're going to go ahead and discuss it in some detail here today on CCF. Absolutely, and and we, uh, you know, some some other things that we thought, you know, with this episode that we would do, um, you know, since we have this great opportunity to talk about this amazing uh, project, this tour, uh, there's really not anything that's ever been done um, like this before. Uh, and it's very exciting. Uh, we got quite a few of our good friends uh, that we know personally um, are going to be on this tour. One of us is going to be joining us later on in the program um, uh, for an interview that we're going to do, sort of roundtable discussion. And um, we thought it as a good opportunity going into the summer and in our, um, our third year of operation here for Celestia Radio – uh, to sort of go back to our roots and talk a little bit about um, what it means to be a music radio station, um, what the music community has really been about uh, here um, in the fandom, uh, you know, with the station and that history and sort of what it's like uh, today and all the people that make it super awesome. Nailed it, Shamrock. And of course, that's the main topic for today's show. So look forward to that. Uh, but just in case this is your first time tuning into Canterlot Crossfade, we'll go ahead and give you a brief rundown of how this show works. Yeah, we've got um, basically this uh, this little introductory part here um, where we sort of introduce you to the topics. Uh, then we go into um, a uh, one of our breaks in the show, one of our music breaks. Uh, we do have two of those music breaks during the show, and we always feature um, usually some of the newest best upcoming music um, that there is in the fandom. Talk about it a little bit uh, after each break. We do have two of those during the show. Um, one before the main topic, and we also have another one um, before we do uh, the interview slash call-in part in the second half of the show. Uh, we also have a news portion of the show at the top of um, the second hour in the show. Uh, and that is a 10-minute sort of super news reel that we do, um, very sort of uh, quick shot fashion, bullet points of stuff, news during the week that you might have missed, um, either on the roundups or on uh, it's every news, news site you would ever want in 10 minutes. <laughs> exactly, it's it's here on Celestia Radio. Every bit of news you could possibly think of um, that uh, that there is in the fandom, and we wrap it up for you in 10. Minutes. That is quicker than you could ever hope to read all of that news in your entire life. 
Um, and so we have that, as well as a little special uh, weather thing we always do every week. Um, then after that, we do have call-in slash interview uh, portion of the show that we do. We usually switch it up either every other week or every once in a while. Um, this week, as we said, we will be doing an interview uh, portion with a special guest. And um, so we will not be doing uh, call-ins today. And uh, the other thing, uh, after that, of course, we come back uh, after the interview or slash Collins, and we do a wrap-up of the show and to look forward at what is going to happen on the next week's um, Canderlock Crossfade. So that's the rundown of the show. Um, as we said, we'll be talking about Music Equestria today in the main portion of the show, as well as a little bit of music history um, here for the station. And, and uh, KB, um, you know, dealing with sort of this music culture that we have now um, in the fandom, who who were the people that you sort of came in on when you when you joined the fandom? What what made you realize that the music portion of this fandom was really something special? You know, I love this. I love telling people about uh, the my initial thoughts and my initial you know the first time that I ever heard a lot is the Brony music in the fandom, and this is well over a year ago. Um, I can't even remember when, probably, but long, long time ago, and. You know, I stumble around, I start seeing the memes and stuff on different various websites, and I start getting into the fandom. And the music was one of the later things that I actually got into when I was first, you know, started, you know, joining the whole Brony fandom and whatnot. I was really in the fan fiction at first, loved fan fiction, read the shit out of it, wrote some, totally got over that within like a month or two, moved completely over to music, got entirely intrigued in that. And, uh, you know, Shamrock, you, you know this because you've listened to my show, my old one, but I used to be um, a dedicated classic rock DJ for my actual job. I had never considered anything other than classic rock. I thought dubstep was the work of the devil, just all this shit. <laughs> um, so, you know, I'm bewildered to come upon some of these songs and whatnot that just really changed my perception of what, you know, music can be. And I think a major part of that was the actual artists that were producing the music because for a long time, I'd always just kind of had this mental image of every dude that's an electronic musician that will go out and perform or make his music just looks like a total douche. Fucking, they got the Skrillex haircut, or they fucking do just the worst live streams ever known to man on their YouTube once a month and get a billion viewers for it. And that was just the mentality I was used to, and it drove me crazy. So finally coming upon and seeing, you know, a nicer artist mentality about nice subject material, brony fandom and whatnot, it really opened my eyes to this, you know, a few new genres of music, and I'm glad it did. Uh, but and to really answer your question, I guess a few specific artists that uh, kind of drew me in. Um, initially, I was really into Octavia's Overture. I like that song. Uh, I don't like it anymore, but I used to like that one a lot. Uh, Super Eurobeat Brony has always been there. That I just loved his stuff from the uh, from the get go. He totally had me fooled for the first three months of my fandom life, though. I totally thought that was three different people, Odyssey and <laughs> Eurobeat and Travis. So I'm like, man, Eurobeat Brony is a really good band. Like, same with Aviators. Like, Aviators is the best band I've ever heard. He's like, hey, Aviators isn't a band. You're like, oh, shit, that's one guy. <laughs> um, so once I learned those facts out, of course, uh, I had to learn that pretty quick once I joined the station. Uh you know, it all kind of came easier. And now, like, I can't even really describe. It all just comes fluidly to me now that that's all I know is that I find music and I play it for the station because that's basically my full-time job. So that's that's the thing. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and the, and the crazy thing about it is, you know, we we talk about all these different, you know, aspects of the fandom or, you know, when someone's trying to describe to someone that's that's not a brony or doesn't know what bronies are, you know, one of the one of the first things that comes to mind is music, and it's something that you know, in, in most other fandoms, that's not really a thing. Um, you always have art. You always have, you know, the people or the, the the constructivist people that you know make products to sell. You know, the vendors, that sort of thing. And fifty percent of the time, that's art, and the other fifty percent of the time, that's something art inspired. You know, whether it's you know, figures. It's like artists or, and goods, basically. Yeah, exactly. Um, and, or, you know, whether you're buying USB drives or, you know, whatever. And, um, and so, 
you know, most of the time it's it's art. Now, you know, one of the portions it's not usually something that makes money necessarily in fandom, but is still extremely important to most fandoms is writing as well. So you've got the fan fiction side of things, and that's those are usually the two pretty prevalent aspects. Um, but you don't really see music in anything. Um, music is the redheaded stepchild of the professions of the fandom. It's just it is. <laughs> It, it's really it's not, it's, it's, it's the it's not an ugly redhead stepchild like they can be pretty attractive a lot of the time and this one I'd say is definitely smoking by fandom standards ab- absolutely you have to agree with me Sharon <laughs> ab- absolutely but there's still I mean but there's still a ginger so you know you have this this aspect where people really aren't sure you know what to what to expect what to think and you know when you go out and I, I tell people all the time you know when we talk about I always talk about the music portion of the fandom first. Anytime I talk to people um, that aren't familiar with with bronies, because um, if you say, oh, there's cool art and there's cool writing, you know, a lot of the time people will be like, well, okay, but that's a lot of things. But if you say there's really good music, that kind of grabs their attention a little bit, because they're not used to that. Um, and, And you can, and when you go to someone and you say, hey, look, you know, I've got 90 gigs of music, of individual, you know, different stuff that consists of everything from, you know, all the electronic genres from D&B to dubstep to house to fucking speedcore and hard style and everything else to, you know, orchestral acoustic stuff, whether you've got the grandiose pieces um, that Macan tends to produce, um, you've got other pieces of that nature... Uh, clear back to the other spectrum, you've got rock, you've got metal, um, all kinds of inspirations, you know, from people like Cyril, or people like Tarby, um, and that music flow really travels throughout everything, and of course there's the pop aspect as well, and there's plenty of that. Um, so, you've got all this stuff, and then you say, oh yeah, and all this 90 gigs of music, you know, that's not, you know, one person or two or three people well i don't know anybody that could produce that much music by themselves (laughs) but um you know you've got all that and then you've also got you know hey this is like 600 people or more and you know you might say oh well i bet 90 percent of that shit no really isn't um sure there's some portions that aren't that great but the amount of effort the amount of skill and talent that goes into it and just how talented all these different people are that produce the music uh, in the fandom is fucking mind blowing. And it started out from nothing. Um, it literally we, just started we, out. We literally made nothing. Yeah, <laughs> there was fucking a field with grass, and no musicians were. You know, they weren't laying down the fields of their synthesizers and their bass lines yet. But they they t- they toiled all of the soil. Now it's a beautiful orchestra of different artists, and they all argue a lot, but it's still a beautiful field. You should check it out sometime. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, you know, it started with this, and even the people that, you know, from William Anderson to fucking Daniel Ingram, those two guys had no idea that something like this would happen. I don't think anybody fucking had a clue. Um, first of all, they didn't have any idea the fandom was going to happen, but even when it did, you know, Fandom and music. Fandom and That's music. That's a one-two punch. The That's mu- like the, the chances of life <laughs> happening on another fucking planet. <laughs> exactly. It's like, what are the fucking, you know, shot in the dark, um, but fucking, like, the stuff that Dan and that fucking William set out, um, just the amount that it inspired and the quickness with which it inspired it is just absolutely mind blowing because you had you had people, um, I wouldn't say right away, but you know as you sort of progressed, you know as the fandom was first beginning, you had those musical artists start to pop up. You started to see, you know, um, the you know the some of the original original people, you know, Macan, Not a Clever Pony, uh, Pinkie Pie Swear, uh, Eurobeat. You know, you started to see a few of these guys come together. And they started up the My Little Remix community. And then from there, as the fandom grew, so too did the music community. Just fucking exploded. 
they basically just went hand in hand, I would have to say. They really did. That uh, it was a symbiotic relationship that got a lot of the sites. And, you know, once once that started, that chain, it was hard to stop. It just kept going. It, yeah, definitely. Exponentially. And uh, with that, I think we're going to go ahead and listen to some music. I mean, we've been talking about it so much. I have a feeling that this is going to be um, a rather fun topic to discuss with our special guest and just to discuss further um, throughout the show. Because, I mean, we're a radio station. We're talking music. This is our livelihoods here, people. So uh, this is an awesome topic. I know I'm looking forward to it. We got a quick commercial break followed by um, a brand new song by Eurobeat Baroni. Why don't you tell them about it, Shamrock? Absolutely. It's called Fly by Eurobeat Baroni, um, and it's a song about Gilda, and it's, it, I tell you what, it's pretty fucking awesome in, in typical Eurobeat fashion. Um, and, I'd uh, say expect it on our next Top 100. Absolutely. Wink, wink. Absolutely. <laughs> well, I mean, Euro, Eurobeat's a sure thing. But, uh, but yeah, so um, that coming up again after our commercial break. Uh, we will be back momentarily here on Canterlot Crossfade only on Celestia Radio. I'm Jeff Burgess, and you're listening to Sexy Time Radio, also known as Celestia Radio. It's harvest season here at Sweet Apple Acres, and the You Pick Apple adventures have begun. You can make the most of this opportunity by getting a bushel full of the plumpest, juiciest apples this side of the Everfree Forest. Whether for a homemade apple pie, delicious apple fritters, or fresh off the tree, it all begins with a visit to Sweet Apple Acres Apple Orchard. Go visit with the Apple family a short trot southwest of Ponyville. Applejack? Well, how to do? Granny Smith? <laughs> Apple Bloom? I want it now! And Big Macintosh? Hey. Yep. We'll treat you like one of the family. Fresh apple cider? Try our 10 varieties. Apple pies and dumplings? Mild water. <laughs> yeah. Sweet red delicious apples? They got them. Tart Granny Smith apples? You'll find them there too. No ladders needed. Just rear up and fuck you some of the sweet apple goodness that graces the plates of our princesses Celestia and Luna. And remember, our apple stand can be found at the corner of Appleton Road, right near Quills and Sofas. Apple cider donuts, fresh apple butter, and apple juice. It's always a family adventure at Sweet Apple Acres. Do you like to party? Yeah. Do you like to eat sugary s***? You know it. Well, what are you waiting for? Come on down to Sugar Cube Corner. We've got the largest selection of diabetes-inducing treats this side of the galaxy. You know how big the galaxy is? Really f***ing big. Wowzers. That's right. We've got cookies, cakes, donuts, eclairs, strudels, cupcakes, flatbreads, and much, much more. Jesus Christ. So get your plot down here, you junkie sad sack, and eat your troubles away. Only at Sugar Cube Corner. Warning. Cupcakes may contain choice amounts of pony flesh. On the pedestal tonight, we have Big Macintosh and Fluttershy on the topic of Celestia Public Radio. So, Fluttershy, what would you do to improve Celestia Radio? Oh, well... I think this I could rightly use some spiffing up. Graphic artists, web designers, and the like. Mac is right. Celestia Radio is currently looking for new team members trained in art, website, and video design and editing. Knowledge in t-shirt printing, crafts, and so on are needed. More information can be found on the Celestia Radio homepage at ponify.me. Break it down, DJ Pone 3. It's Celestia Radio. Now I'm the friend that you lost, will be gone forever. Keep that in mind, 
what to do And that you're all the one struggle behind I try to understand there Where's the you that I used to know You know I tried to be right and hard I can when you're letting me go Yes, I'll try to run on the horizon Into another land, ready to find the future Turn my wings up for departure Into the soft and Alrighty, folks, that was Fly by Euro B. Brony right here on Canderlock Crossfade on Her Majesty's finest radio station, Celestia Radio, all pony, all the time. DJ K. Brony and DJ Shamrock here co-hosting to bring you all the table-flipping madness that you can expect here on CCF. That's a great artist to kind of bring us into the discuss of the history of the musical side of the fandom. Euro B. Brony was the first, and uh, I'm, I'm pretty confident in saying that the first musician. I'm pretty sure it was his uh, Euro mix of uh, you got to uh, giggle up the ghosty that he did it pretty immediately in the early days of the Phantom, and that was kind of the first remix that came out, and that set a precedent, I believe, because that people we can do this. This is remixable material. It can sound really good. And what the fuck is Euro beat, and why do I like it? And I think those are a few of the things that went through everyone's mind that initial you know, that first initial remix, and it snowballed from there, and that's how we evolved into so many things. We evolved into Milo Remix, Celestia Radio, of course, you know, all these major projects, convention concerts, and now looking at a full-scale tour with over, with about nine musicians, it looks like, maybe more. So this, yeah, I mean, it, the music side, no matter what he tells you, is still growing, it's still an evolving process, and it's absolutely incredible to get to watch, um, you know, kind of go hand in hand with it at a radio station. Uh, so, Shamrock, why don't you kind of give us a little insight as to how, you know, an early artist kind of rolled to, say, a niche in the fan rather than just an interesting little fan. Yeah, well, um, you know, like we said, you know, earlier, um, it was really something interesting to see you know, Daniel Ingram and William Anderson bring to life um, this this music and the show and, and being one of the uh, major facets, really, um, to the show, to the creativity of the project, and um, seeing how people 
became inspired by that. Um, at first, you had some people that um, you had a few folks that were music affiliated um, that came in and saw the show and thought, "Wow, this show has really good music. Um, I'm going to start producing stuff that um, that is related to the show." And you know, at first, what a lot of what a lot of people did was they took songs from the show. And they made it their own in some way, um, whether the, uh, that be by remixing or you know or what have you. Um, and they started this community called My Little Remix. And you know um, the people that started that were you know Not a Clever Pony, Pinkie Pie, Swear, and Macan. And those three guys came together and said, "Look, we've got a real good opportunity here um, to." basically foster a musical community in this fandom and you know they saw enough people with interest and the basic idea behind MLR was to gather musicians together um, share opinions on the show um, but also be a place where people could share their expertise with music with other people um, that were maybe trying to get into music um, in some way or felt inspired by the show and wanted to make some kind of um, creativity from it and it really grew from there. And, of course, as we know, one of the people that uh, helped develop the website and still works with MLR um, on the actual um, back-end side of the website is PH Pony, my co-owner for the radio station here at Celesti Radio. And um, basically at that point you had... Um, you know, PHP on that side of things, and there were some people back when, you know, MLP uh, was starting out, and of course it kind of spread from the cartoon board on 4chan, um, where the fan base sort of started, and, you know, a lot of those people, you know, some of them got together and said, hey, you know, this musical community is starting to come about, why don't we, you know, some people came together and said, why don't we create a radio station, and those people were Hooflander, uh, Karai, um, and PH Pony. And Hooflander at the time obviously was the main uh, graphic designer for the website, and he was the owner. He's the one who paid for the station. Um, he created all of the merchandise back in the day that we had for CR shirts. Um, PH Pony ran the website end of things, uh, sort of as a co-project with MLR. And, you know, then Karai was sort of the public face um, of CR at the time, and he handled questions and getting artists to submit their stuff to the website, um, and that's how we got music back in the day. Was all those artists from My Little Remix? We've got, we still got the link there on on their website, right at the top. Um, Celestia Radio is the only one affiliated with the original music community, and um, and it became the first uh, radio station in the Brony fandom, and. You know, we owe a lot to the musical community for that opportunity and for being able to um, really get started and showcase a lot of amazing people um, back in that day. And that was back in, um, I believe, late April, early May of 2011. Um, and at that time, there had actually been, um, there was a remix war. Uh, My Little Remix is famous for the The Remix Wars. Um, and the, the first one, I can't remember when it happened, I wasn't there at the time, uh, but then the second one sort of came in as Celestia Radio was starting, and of course we, I was around by the time the third one was in full swing, uh, late summer of, of, uh, 2011. Um, and at that point, by Remix War 3, uh, that was the, uh, New Lunar Republic Remix War, <laughs> um, after, <laughs> after Not A Clever Pony's extremely famous song, uh, The New Lunar Republic. Um, he basically is single-handedly responsible for making that a thing. And it's really funny, too, because his favorite his favorite character is actually Celestia. Um, oh, man. <laughs> not, not a lot of people know that. But, um, yeah, his, his, favorite, his favorite is actually Princess Celestia. Uh, but from sort of a fan-in perspective, you know, he likes to play... Uh, the other you know, side of side. yeah, he he likes to play the other side of things and and try and live up with uh, um, the whole new lunar republic thing, and it definitely was extremely famous and just um, crazy. 
Um, well, after hearing that, I think Not a Clever Pony is worthy of an official CCF golf clap. Oh, absolutely. Let's let's go. Let's let's have it. Official official CCF golf clap. Yes. Yes. All right. Um, Very good. <laughs> and uh, you know, but back then we had. Um, you know, gosh, I'm, I'm trying to remember the the amount of musical artists that I had to pull from. There were there was a very core group, um, who still sort of remain today as a core group. They um, that group has fallen apart a little bit um, in in recent times because some of them have left the fandom, and a lot of them are on to actual professional ends of music now. Um, it's it's sort of bittersweet. Uh, but you know, back then there was about a twenty or thirty person core group, and you know they were the elite of music making at the time. You know, um, all the ones the highest we men- echelon. Exactly, all the ones we mentioned. Um, you know, Eurobeat, uh, Macan, not a clever Pinkie Pie, swear. Uh, you had Alex S, extremely famous, very famous with our station as well. In fact, um, you know we. Myself and Alex developed uh, a bond very, very early on, um, before just before I started working for Celestia Radio um, in June and uh, of 2011. You know, and basically he he would listen to CR. You know, he was a regular listener, and I actually didn't know it at the time, but um, uh, I would give shout outs and all kinds of things and play Alex's songs all the time because I loved them I thought they were some of the best stuff and uh, and you know we started talking eventually and he's like yeah man I listen every day you know on my way to work and everything every day and uh, here you giving the shout outs and stuff and and so we you know sort of became friends after that and um, as well that is the magic of radio right there <laughs> it's true the magic of radio it's true um you know, and and there were so many other people as well. Um, of course, there were there were some that were a little more on the on the um, disrespected end of things. You had um, two two people in particular for Celestia Radio, um, Acoustic Brony and uh, Deathinator had a very bad reputation on CR from our listeners um, because that was probably ninety percent of a lot of the music. Because Deathinator and Acoustic at the time just pumped out so much stuff. And because there was hardly anything else. That's all we had to pull from. Right. And, and there was, it was such like, a... like, shit, I'm out of my playlist. What do we have left? <laughs> oh, we've got Deathinator and Acoustic Brony. All right, folks, let's listen to this song again. And people are like, fuck, I'm so over pony British rock and roll. <laughs> yeah, it was just, I mean, the amount of... Uh, the amount of stuff that they... And it doesn't even seem like much now, because I can remember back in the day, before... Um, I started DJing for CR, and I would just listen, um, which I, I wasn't not a DJ for a very small amount of time. Uh, I basically heard about CR, and within a week or two, I started DJing. Um, but in that amount of time, I can remember the original version of Macan's um, uh, uh, Luna Deo, which the name has actually changed uh, to Luna Day because he yeah, realized yeah. later on <laughs> that the Latin was incorrect. <laughs> um, and so he he switched it. But, I mean, I can remember that being the first, uh, sort of the first orchestral song that I heard in the fandom. And, thinking, and it's Holy. still one of, if not the best, yeah, in my it, opinion. I mean, it, McCon, hands down, McCon is the John Williams of the fandom. Um he, I don't. Th- in, no one rivals him when it comes to full-blown orchestrated pieces. Um, but I mean, at the time, hearing that and just going, "Oh my God!" It's like I'm hearing music from John Williams. You know, it's just like, man, this is really fucking great stuff. And that's what really got me excited about it. Um, you know, and then you know, eventually hearing stuff from Alex S and going, "Oh my God!" There's so much different stuff there's you know it's different it's not all just dubstep and eventually the brony fan had caught up in that respect and we got about 90 percent dubstep after a while but um you know it was just magnificent to see um how intense that the music community was at that time and with the remix wars coming in with remix war three after that um 
it really just exploded, and you really saw a showcase with Remix War 3 of what everyone's style was, because it took one song, one idea of the New Lunar Republic, and you saw about 30 different examples of what music was possible based on one song. And that really set the stage for what um, it meant to have the Brony fandom producing fan music, because you know people look to the show for inspiration, and they look at songs and they say, this song is going to be an icon for this particular aspect, and then 100 or 200 people you know, try and make that song their own in some way. Um, and that is how you get the proliferation of all of this of all this music in the fandom. Um, and it's pretty fucking incredible. And so that's how, I mean, that's how sort of CR came to, um, you know, be reconciled with the music, you know, portion of the fandom and, um, really grow at that point. And MLR was at its, you know, at its peak and growing, um, into 2012, um, as well, CR, you know, CR was doing the same as well. Um, so the first, you know, the beginnings of the music community, as well as the first Brony radio station, um, sort of culminating at the same time. And it was really a really awesome part of fandom history that I don't think will ever be uh, forgotten. Nope. It'll be hard. I don't think it can happen again. It'll be hard to forget. Uh, so it's important that we, you know, I think it's nice that we kind of can recall these stories sometimes because the fandom just grows so much. Every day, every month, every year, and there's so many new people that just have no familiar <laughs> familiarity. I cannot say that word this morning. Familiarity or today. Uh, I cannot. Yeah, my brain's just not functioning at the moment. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, and now I forgot what I was going to say. God damn it, Shamrock! They don't. You made me do <laughs> something about them not having familiarity with you know the past. Because oh yeah. Because there's so many. The whole point of that presentation, they can listen to this and now be familiar. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) That was that was what I was trying to get at there. Uh, So with that, that that kind of brings us to the end of 2011 into early 2012, and this is around when I started becoming involved with Celestia Radio pretty heavily. Uh, Shamrock got switched over from Karai. There was the switch from Karai to Shamrock as the owner of the station, and that was basically the same week I got hired on. And from my standpoint, and this is definitely different from Shamrock's because he was in the game earlier than I was, but this was kind of like my golden age as far as music is concerned. And it might be somewhat of a golden age for the fandom overall, and not necessarily because it was the best quality of music coming out, but I feel like it was the one time for a solid few months we had a steady rate and flow of weekly new releases by the same artists. They were making albums, they were all free, People were live streaming. The energy was good. The hype was up. Ghost was the only bad person that we ever had to deal with. And that was like amazing because Ghost is literally just a trolling piece of shit. That is nothing compared to some of the drama that we talk about now. And that's, I don't know. We're now in the transitional period between 2011 and 2013, known as 2012 that whole year. So Shamrock, what, I mean, you started kind of becoming less involved in the music game at this point. What do you remember um, from that early those early months of that year. Well, basically, um, what what happened for me is, you know, I was I was, you know, here at CR for, um, I don't know, I would say a solid two months um, in the summer of 2011. Two, well, um, three. I'll, I'll I'll give it three months, and then you know there was about another month there where I was still around, um, but I started to get involved with school into September, um, at that point, you know, the, the music community was beginning to face a dilemma, or the dilemma would be fast approaching, um, and that is that, uh, you had season two. Season two of Ponies began the great expansion of, um, the Brony fandom, uh, you had all the initial people that came in from the first season and the summer of 2011. And then, you know, all those people knew each other. It was very, I won't say it was a small community, but people, you knew who people were um, at that point. And you knew pretty much every music artist. You knew all of the 
radio slash podcast people, everybody was known um, if they were good at what they were doing. And, um, you know, that was back when we were getting 300, 200, 300 listeners and there were, there was no competition around. And, um, you know, at that point I pulled back from CR and let, um, you know, that was when Karai took over cause Hooflander was kind of in dead pile of bones in the closet at that point. <laughs> um, basically when I came in, Hooflander was like, this dude's energetic and is doing things. I don't have to be here anymore. So, you know, even though I had no, I had no real authority, uh, in the organization at all. I was just like the DJ, you know, I wasn't, I, I happened to be the most famous part of the station, but I didn't hold any authority at all. Um, and so, you know, Karai was kind of like, who Flander, let me take over the keys so I can run the boat here. And, um, you know, I, so I pulled back from that, let Karai do his thing. You know, we had set up a good model in place um, for prison to sort of help with. MLI, uh, he was sort of my um, protege, I guess I would say at that time. Um, and protege 1.0. And, uh, you know, he took over doing DJing. QCOM came in, started doing DJing. Um, eventually Ponytoes closer to 2012 came in as well. Uh, um, and I stayed with the music community. So I stayed associated with CR and I basically was the music liaison, um, and stuck with, stuck with the music community. I was talking with all those guys fucking from, you know, Silva Hound and iPie and General Mumble and fucking Wooden Toaster to, you know, Eurobeat, Macan, Pinkie Pie Swear, Donna Clev, Alex S, fucking the whole gamut of... Um, the elite of music making at the time. Um, and again, keep in mind, this is all, this is all pre, um, living tombstone and Mike, the Mike, and sort of that, that wave that came in with them as far as the new musicians. Um, so this was still a very, you know, you know, there was no one standout, I guess is what I'd say. Everybody was sort of together as a, as a collaborative, um, then you started to move into that second phase, like I was saying. All those other music people came in. Um, you know, Mike the Mike, Living Tombstone, and September. That was his. That was the huge. I mean, I can remember the Toast Beard. Where and for those people that don't know what Toast Beard is, <laughs> a brief preface. Um, toast Beard was a weekly music competition. Um, it was sort of the half and half with MLR. It was the competition driven music side of MLR and iPi ran that and um, as well he also ran the Skype chats and stuff like that um, but it was just you know this amazing thing to see all this you know new music and it forced people to be creative it forced them to make music because a lot of people at the time um, were having a hard time putting stuff out regularly learning music all that kind of thing so it was a good learning experience for people uh, but September came out he became hugely fucking popular um later on obviously going into you know 20 2012 we had discord um and a lot of the other stuff that made him even more popular um but that whole new wave of musicians really caused a, a very interesting reaction to happen within the music community and you started to see a little more um you know a little more frustration between the original folks and this mass of hundreds of of musicians that came in, and I can remember in the Skype chat uh, of of MLR back then it was known as Mega Skype, and Mega iPi. Skype. It was so it was literally so small. There, I think there were about thirty people in that chat, and it was and um, you know, it had that core. And I can remember um, I was known as New Guy Number Two because that that was how small that group was at the time. Um, iPi, you know, started. He was like. There's more than 30 people in here. I can't keep track of people anymore. So we just started calling everybody new guy. Um, <laughs> and so I was new guy number two. And then eventually by the time we got new guy number three and then four and then five, and we had new guy number 20, and at that point it was like, you know, iPod was like, fuck this shit. And, you know, it just got <laughs> it just got so crazy and out of control. Um, and that's when it exploded. And now that music chat has probably close to 300 people in it. Um 
and it's people just did not know how to deal. There were too many musicians that came in at the same time. Um, that just that, sounds like a pencil storm happening twenty four seven all hours. Jesus, of the day. you have no fucking idea, dude. It was it was fucking ridiculous, and they just you know nobody really knew what to do because those new musicians that came in, they wanted to learn and they wanted to make a name for themselves, but they didn't really have good ground to stand on because that ground was already taken up. So, you know, Mm. they had to try and take away from that ground from other people. um, And they had to develop a name for themselves and make something that was theirs. And so that really was the conundrum. And that's how you end up with so much music drama that's happened. Um, and you see drama that happens in other parts of the community as well, um, but but the music drama is the stuff that we know particularly well. Um, and so that's sort of what happened going into 2012. Um, and I stuck around with the music community, you know, closely with them uh, for the next you know little while before um, there was that about few month break, and then I ended up taking over CR, and that's when I had to kind of break away from the music community at that point and go mm-hmm. full on. Um, full time running the station. It was an interesting transition, to say the least. Big one. And with that, you know, I was we were kind of planning on I was going to cover a little bit of what happened, uh, basically, kind of mid twenty twelve to now, as far as music is concerned. But we're getting right. closer to the time uh, that we're going to go ahead and start our weather and news segments, relatively. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and kind of speed through that. As we all know, there's been a slight. Uh, shift as far as the music side of the fandom is concerned and we've been seeing um, and it's kind of an interesting pattern to watch because I've been able to see it grow fall do all of its different transitional things throughout you know the time that the fandom has been around and what I've seen now is that there have been artists that had nothing made a name got really popular on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook all that stuff they made their musical name for themselves and then they either just got tired of the pony aspect completely, dropped the pony, did their own thing. They just got tired of being musicians, stopped doing it completely. There's been more than a handful of those musicians. And there's also been wildly successful ones that just don't want to take the pony route anymore because they feel that they have a grander horizon elsewhere. And this has been happening, happening rapidly to a lot of that first generation, kind of mid-second generation level of musicians. And we're seeing a whole new wave of new folks come in, a lot of more focus on the acoustic side, um, more original songs, more lyrical, I guess, as you could say. I think it's because we felt the need as a fandom to make that shift from remixing the hell out of everything, because boy, do we know how to remix the hell out of everything, you know, to going, all right, we need to make it new, we need to keep the music flowing, but we don't have songs to do it with, especially in between you know, season two to season three, and now we're in, in between season three and season four, that there's this new gap, this new rift that needs to be filled with some sort of presence. And the musicians right now are feeling that, like I said, original songs, more lyrical, uh, more instrumental, more groups, less individual musicians making a name, a lot more kind of people collaborating almost constantly. But there's a few musicians that I know that don't even work alone, that they're wildly talented, but they always collaborate with one other artist at least to get their music out there. So that's just an interesting shift. But with that, we're going to go ahead and slowly segue into uh, what we're going to be talking about with our special guest after our news and weather break. And uh, that is none other than Musiquestria. So we've been talking about, you know, the evolution from just a few guys in a Skype call to radio stations and remixing competitions all the way up to a full-fledged tour And we're going to have a resident expert on this tour. He's a member of the group himself performing. We're going to have him on later, hopefully, to chat with us about Musiquestria. But just in case you're not familiar with it, I can go ahead and just read you quickly what is off of their About page so you can get a general idea of what the hell Musiquestria is and why it is so awesome for the fandom and just for humanity in general. Musiquestria is a month-long pony music tour spanning the entirety of the United States from Everfree Northwest in Seattle, Washington, to cities in the New England area. During these four weeks, we hope to visit as many major cities as possible across the country, bringing incredible live performances of some of the community's most talented musicians to you. Bronies have already infiltrated so much of pop culture. The first of its kind, this first-of-its-kind tour will take us to a whole new level. 
that this series of epic events are successful, this tour will become an annual event, bringing up and coming Brony musicians right across North America and into your hometown. So that is the official about off of their Tumblr page, their main website, uh, Musiquestria, which we will go ahead and post a link in the chat here shortly. So everyone check that out. So you can get more familiar with it before we chat into it further. And uh, Shamrock, what are, uh, what are your thoughts on just general idea of a pony tour? Well, you, you know, I think it's pretty incredible because, you know, as you said, we came from uh, individual artists making a name for themselves, um, radio, remix wars, um, all these group collaborations, and, and we've even seen, you know, huge albums come out, um, such as the Balloon Party albums, um, Rainbow Rooted's another recent one, um, and just these these huge projects that take massive amounts of time. And um, now to see, and of course, you know, performing at live concerts at conventions, um, and now we see this magnificent idea, which I, I honestly, I almost never thought we'd see the day. Um, it has been talked about before, um, having a tour across the United States, um, back when I was actually working, um, one of the things when I was focused on the music community back in, you know, 2012, um, was the process of possibly designing a, uh, music based documentary of the fandom. Um, that was before the Brony Doc was even a thing um, or an idea. And, you know, there was a proposed idea to go all the way around the country and do this. And to see it finally um, sort of come to light is very exciting, especially since they're hitting, you know, quite a few major places around uh, the United States. So it will be very, very interesting um, to see how it all pans out. And we are going to have... Um, a great person coming in, um, on the show to, you know, talk with us about it. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's going to be awesome. Well, awesome. I'm looking forward to chatting with our special guest, Zell, about this up and coming tour. Don't go anywhere, folks. We're going to have a quick commercial break shortly followed by our official Equestria weather reports here on CCF. And then we're going to do our 10 minute news speed show where you can catch all of last week's fandom news in 10 epic minutes only here on Celestia Radio. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Celestia Radio listeners, this is Pominator, Chief of Security for Buck, the largest miles of pony convention in Europe, here to tell you how to get involved. The convention is coming very soon, from the 23rd through to the 25th of August, hosting at the Bridgewater Hall, Manchester, as well as a special venue where we're hosting the Summer Sun Celebration, which is a all-night-long musical festival. We have quite a lot of talent, such as musicians Glaze, Living Tombstone, Acoustic Brony and Ted the Pony, along with a special guest, John DeLancey. You check at bookcon.org, we'll have more details there, and we hope to see you there. Want to deliver mail fast and safe? Try the Derby Hooves Postal Service. Derby personally handles each piece of mail like a child and will deliver it immediately. Unlike the Equestrian Postal Service, Derby delivers mail every day of the week. Every pony loves Derby's Postal Service. Just listen to these testimonials. I don't know how, but my mail got to where it needed to go. And I got a map. Derby doesn't seem like the brightest pony in the question, but she is fast, and she gives us all muffins, which is cool too. Well, the eyes are a very noticeable feature of Derby, but she is extremely fast. My mail got to Kayla from Ponyville in one day, and I got a muffin. What is it with that pony and muffins? So instead of using Equestrian Postal Service, try Derby Hooves, where your mail matters. Hello, everypony. This is QD Brody. I'm Dragonite. I'm Equestria Dude. This is Castanade. This is Dreamhop. And I'm Pony One Kenobi, and we are the Beetle Bronies, and you're... Uh, okay. Okay, doing the Liverpool accents was a bad idea. It's yeah, yeah, that's a stupid idea. Okay, yeah, yeah, stupid. I'm sorry for even suggesting that idea. Can I go home now? Anywho, I'm Pony One Kenobi, we are the Beetle Bronies, and, and you're, you're listening, listening to, to Celestia Radio. Radio. 
And we're back here on Canterlot Crossfade, where censorship can go FCC itself, only on Celestia Radio. Now time for your weather report here for this week. In Cancer Lot, throughout the day today, we've been experiencing some light showers as Cloudsdale edges closer to the capital city of Cancer Lot. The highfalutin ponies here are encouraged to keep to their summer parties indoors or incur the pitiable fate of the low society bunch that have to dabble in this mess as the rain and stormy weather is expected to pick up even more going into this evening with a predicted fall amount of 1 to 2 inches. Temperatures this evening will, however, remain around 72 degrees Fahrenheit. Expect the drab weather to clear up sometime around Thursday this week. And that's it for the weather report in Cancer Lot. Now to you, KB. Well, Shamrock, I've got the report here for Manhattan for the upcoming week. Today in the big city, it's rather chilly with a high of 55 degrees Fahrenheit and a low of 32 There's going to be partly cloudy skies for half the week, which will slowly form into pure overcast, followed by torrential downpours. We've got a cold front coming in from Huffington that's expected to stay for the rest of the week and leave around next Wednesday. So feel free to order up that extra hot coffee from Apple Bucks because the scarf just isn't going to cut it. And with our weather report now done, we will move on to the news of the week for the fandom here on Canterlot Crossfade. Alrighty, Shamrock. Well, as we have it this week, apparently the first bit of news Hasbro is claiming copyright rights to Hashbrony's 3D printing style. Apparently, Hashbrony has been 3D printing pony models for some time now, and uh, Hasbro has given him the shutdown, telling him that they own those models and he cannot do whatever he was doing with them. I'm not sure if he was just showcasing them as art on his Deviant Art or something, or if he was trying to make a profit. You know, it's always iffy with Hasbro. I'd imagine it's the latter, the profit-making. Um, that seems to typically be what riles them up. But, I mean, they canceled friendship, uh, or fighting is magic. And, I mean, that was a non-profit uh, activity there. So it's it's just hard to tell. Absolutely. Uh, and as we've seen uh, from recent polls conducted by EQD, most people tend not to read the actual pony comics that have been coming out uh, from Katie Cook and Andy Price. Uh, but it has been pretty well unanimously decided that the physical form is by far the most popular. Um, and of course, those comics, extremely amazing, extremely popular comics. Um, you know, we've gotten to talk to Andy Price quite a few times, but uh, uh, it's no surprise that for those that do like reading the comics, that the physical form is uh, going to be one of the things that people try to go towards the most. Sounds interesting. Well, if you're a fan of fan fiction and or documentaries or both, that's a great thing because uh, there is an upcoming fan fiction documentary about uh, all you art- all you writers, I should say, and uh, fanfic writers out there in the fandom. There's been a few setbacks to the production of the documentary uh, from the creators directly word of mouth. However, it is still set to show a short preview at uh, the upcoming convention, Everfree Northwest, and we're looking at an official release dates for this fan fiction documentary in July or August of this year. I'm not exactly sure what's going to entail. I'm looking forward to it, though, because I've never really actually heard of a documentary about uh, the fan fiction writer's side, or really just much attention to detail on that side of the fandom, so I hope uh, to those documentary guys that they are able to make it well produced, and I'm looking forward to checking it out. Absolutely. Um, It should be very interesting to see. Uh, And for those of you that are familiar uh, with the game Trot Mania. Trot Mania has come out with uh, one of their most recent, um, I guess what I would call them is DLCs. Uh, Rhythm is Magic, so that's now available uh, as a form of some, some added songs and things into there for Trot Mania. Uh, so head on over and uh, see what you can see with those songs and add them to your list. Well, we were already talking about uh, comic books and how people like to go about reading them, but there's big news coming to all you comic book fans of the availability and release of the number five My Little Pony Friendship is Magical Micro series, which is to feature Pinkie Pie. Uh, it's been recently released and is now available to the general public. I'm not sure when we'll be seeing those pop up in physical form at the actual stores, such as Hot Topic and uh, other chain stores, but I'm sure that you can go and pick them up online at IDW and other various comic book websites at this time. 
Yep, and uh, for those that have seen over on Equestria Daily, a recent new drama poll uh, has been featured to sort of uh, see what the comparisons are in all of the very famous um, sort of explosive drama uh, scenarios that we've seen in the fandom uh, over the past year. So it's comparing um, here the Equestria Girls announcement, uh, you know, ponies being humans, it's it's uh, taking the Alicorn Twilight, as well as comparing uh, Fighting His Magic being shut down, and it's also, of course, having options for none of these, uh, and all of these, of course, a bit of a surprise, uh, overwhelmingly so far, it looks like Fighting His Magic being shut down is the most uh, drama that this fandom is selecting out of that list. It was, it was a low blow that people are still riled up about that. They're pissed. And, uh, probably, they probably will be for the rest of their fan existence. <laughs> it's just, it just stays with you, I guess. Yeah, uh, in other news, we have uh, recent updates on a new Brony project coming out dubbed Questria. Q-U-E-S-T-R-I-A. So just take off the, the E and you can probably get the general picture here. Uh, they have an Indiegogo now available to start trying to raise funds for the project. They were a little vague on their actual page, but from what I could deduce uh, from the you know, the explanation and the about page on their Indiegogo is that uh, it is a video game. It's kind of an open source project by a couple bronies uh, that they're trying to get off of the ground. It's all about casting you into the role of a princess in Equestria, and uh, you go through some hardships, turmoil, you, you grow as a person, you become a better princess through it. As you go from novice princess with all your people breathing down your neck back in, you know, the days of the Inquisition and shit, uh, coming into a full-fledged celestial body like Celestia. So, not many more updates on it now, but check it out. Uh, they have an Indiegogo page, Questria, the project. Looking forward to seeing what exactly it is and when we can expect to see it. Absolutely. Um, and for those of you that did not know, there is now advertising um, available for purchase in the Buck um, Con Program book. Again, that's um, one of the conventions that takes place over in Europe, and uh, we're actually affiliated with them. We are going to be guests this year at Buck, so you're not going to want to miss it. We've got a little bit of time left before our 10 minutes of news is done, so let's quickly blast through some of this stuff. There's a new Equestria Girls uh, drop in a Mad TV skit. They give a nice jab about uh, Hasbro being money uh, money grabbing cash cows. So check it out if you're a Mad TV person. They actually are. Uh, I have a feeling there's probably one or two bronies behind the scenes at Mad TV because this is three or four, the third or fourth time that we've seen a pony on Mad TV. So interesting to see what happens there. Absolutely, definitely always interesting to see those new uh, new skits there on Mad TV. Um, and a mod is in development to ponify the game Actraiser for those familiar. Um, with that game, uh, I know there's lots of information out there um, right now as that mod is being developed to try and ponify that game. Um, games left and right being ponified. It's it's going to be interesting. Uh, okay. It was also it looked like we have a new release um, in the Japan series of My Little Pony. We got episode Fall Weather Friends now released over there in Japan. I actually haven't myself followed any of the Japan releases, but this was one of my favorite episodes. So I might even go check it out just to see what it's like in a different language with some uh, different unique voice acting. Yeah, I tell you what, those, uh, you know, the, I've listened to a, a few of the episodes um, in the Japanese, and it's pretty much awesome. Um, it's going to be pretty intense. So uh, the Ask King Sombra um, blog on Tumblr, that mod was featured. Um, in an article and interview in Salt Magazine, um, it's actually going to be uh, um, pretty neat if you want to check that out. Uh, follow that Ask King Sombra blog um, and see everything that um, that girl has to say about her art and you know what it's like to kind of run a pony blog. So if you're ever interested uh, in what that's like, go ahead and give that a uh, check out. You can find the full interview. Um, article on Equestria Daily. Speaking of that site, uh, we found an interesting, as you dubbed, epic video review of Equestria Girls uh, now available in a roundup. And of course, you know, we're going to be seeing tons upon tons of these Equestria Girl reviews. I'm sure they're going to be varying 
in their accuracy as far as, you know, what good reviewing is and what good reviewing is not. But I'm looking forward to kind of filtering through them and seeing what exactly uh, the movie was all about and people's thoughts on it so far. I haven't seen it myself. I have a link to it. I will check it out eventually. Yep. And um, lastly, to wrap up uh, sort of the new segment here, um, there's also been some pretty epic-sized pony tattoos featured um, on the MLP forum on 4chan, as well as um, uh, posted links to it on Equestria Daily. Um, some full bone size things. One is a Pinkie Pie one, and uh, on someone's leg, and another one is a full back size tattoo of uh, Twilight Sparkle. So some pretty awesome tattoos there. Um, and that wraps up everything for this week in Pony News here on Canterlot Crossfade. We will be back after a short break and a music break uh, with our special guest talking about Music Equestria in just a few minutes. Don't go anywhere. Right here on Celesti Radio. Hello, this is Princess Celestia. After a long trying day, I love to curl up by the fire and listen to Celestia Radio, the best radio station in Equestria. And no, the fact that it shares my name has nothing to do with that at all. Nope, nuh-uh. Celestia Radio, all pony, all the time. Hey there, Brony. Run out of space on your hard drive? Too much Rule 34 to rarity taking up all your precious memory? Well, fear not, because we've got a solution. Dash drives! Flash drives with your favorite pony engraved on the side. That's right. Now you can take your waifu anywhere, along with 64 gigabytes of memory. That's a lot of clock fiction. With 210 possible color combinations, dozens of graphics to choose from, and two lines of engraved personal text, your Dash Drive will be your very own. All you have to do is go to DashDrives.com and place an order. You'll be sporting some excellent Flash Drive pony swag in no time. Dash Drives. Bio storage just got 20% cooler. Do you want to have a night on the town but need someone to watch your precious little animals? Look no further than Fluttershy's Take Care. Fluttershy will watch your animals with more care than a mother would watch her child. She makes sure that each one is fed, bathed, and asleep. Fluttershy offers overnight service or hourly service, and out of love for all animals, she will do it for free. Just listen to these testimonials. My little bunny was safe and sound all day. Fluttershy is such a nice bunny. My little kitty loved it. She was well rested and fed when I came to pick her up. I love Fluttershy. She makes sure my precious puppy gets whatever he needs. She's a very kind pony. So why wait? Bring your little animal down to Fluttershy's animal daycare next time you want. But not on the town. If you don't have to use your traditional royal Catalan voice... The radio isn't turned up loud enough. Celestia Radio. All pony. All the time. Come such a long, long way And I've watched you from that very first day To see how you might grow to see what you might do To see what you've been through And all the ways you've made me proud of you Long, long way, and I've watched. 
watched you from that very first day To see how you might grow To see what you might do To see what you've been through And all the ways you've made me proud of you It's time now for a new change to come You've grown up and your new life has begun To go where you will go To see what you will see To find what you will be For it's time for you To fulfill your destiny you might do to see what you've been through and all the ways you've made me proud of you and we're back folks dj k brony here joined still with dj shamrock here on kinderlock crossfade where censorship can go fcc itself uh, you know shamrock i remember few months back, I believe it was Brony Fan Affair, the festivities had ended, we were chilling back at a, at the apartment that we were all crammed in for that convention, and you and I got chatting about the possibilities of driving cross-country and spreading pony music and pony love by the means of the rubber, and while that was just a vivid fantasy that you and I had, there is someone here that we have in this call that is seeing that actual dream through alongside eight other guys, as well as probably a whole bunch of other different musicians and helpers along the way. And of course, I talk none other than the musician Charby, who has so wonderfully joined us today to come talk about Musiquestria and the Brony Tour. So how you doing, Tarby? I am doing wonderful. I'm on my third or fourth wind right now after pulling an all-nighter, so I am on cloud I don't know what's higher than cloud nine, cloud seventeen, or something like that. At this point, I think <laughs> cloud seventeen. Holy shit! It's yeah. definitely a number that's higher exactly. than nine. <laughs> yes, that is it. That is the thing that I'm going for. Yes. Okay. <laughs> oh so, man. <laughs> so, um, you know, first of all, for for those that don't know, um, obviously Tarby's a musician. You should probably know that by now. Um, he does he does do stuff for CR now, um, has been for some time. How how long did you say that we've had you on for now? Um, well, according to the chat on this computer, it was three months. But I think I started doing it just after LPU actually. So since about March, mid March. Right, think. right. Yeah. Yeah. Much. yeah, I can. Yeah, I can remember now. Um, Man, that was that was crazy too. That that was another uh, get together of <laughs> musicians. Yeah. Epic um, fucking proportions. Epic fucking time. proportions. It just oh man, all of all of my body and that that whole thing that happened. All of your hair too. <laughs> yeah, it's coming back though. Did you did you see the the my, profile pic? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's coming back. We get to. Week eighteen of what? What is it? Operation uh, Grow Beard. <laughs> Operation Grow Beard. Very simple, straightforward, to the point. Um, yeah. You never get lost in the middle of that plan. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. 
You had me at grow, but then somewhere around beard, you just fucking dropped me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it, it's a difficult one to follow, I know, but I, you know, I tried to make it, I figured four words was just too much. By then, the hashtags, they start to go crazy, so, um, yeah. Uh, so, tell us a little bit, when did, um, I, I guess there's, there's two questions, um, when and who, uh, in regards to Music Questria, the, um, the concept, when, uh, was it talked about, and, and who was involved, and I guess also how, how was, how was the idea for Music Questria, um, you know, decided upon? Um, now, I might be mistaken, because I wasn't there for this, but if I'm correct, this actually idea has been around since Everfree Northwest last year. So, just about a year ago. Um, Bajati, the person who was the chairman last year, and I believe is the co-chair at the second-in-command of Everfree Northwest this year, uh, is well, kind of, I guess, decided that he wanted to try and do a music tour. And ideas were bounced around, and I actually had heard wind of it personally uh, from Silva Hound at Canterlot Gardens in the fall, and n- nothing really came of it. Uh, I talked to Bajati once, and he basically told me, hush, hush, and I didn't hear again about it until months later actually, uh, when we were at a Seattle Brony meetup and we were eating dinner at some, uh, it's called Gameworks, it's kind of like Dave and Buster's, mm-hmm. and yeah, he just looks at me and goes, hey dude, you want a tour? Like, just out of the fucking blue, and I'm like, oh, yeah, okay, okay, yeah, that's cool, and uh, again, back to Las Pegasus, that's when things really started to take off, but yeah, Bajati was kind of the mastermind behind it all, he was the person who initially started contacting people who got the general idea of, you know, basically had the dream and the motivation to do it, and, um, when Las Pegasus happened, it kind of was the kick in the ass, I guess, to really mm-hmm. get it going. Um, it's when I officially signed on. It's when Fenning signed on. Um, it's Silva and Mike, I believe, were already signed on. But it's after that happened, you know, we started putting together the group, essentially, that was going to go out. And Bajati and a select few other individuals, including um, Austin, uh, another Austin, actually, who is, I guess, the tour, not so much the tour manager, but the booking agent, the person who's contacting the venues and stuff. Um, They took care of all the financing stuff. They took care of making the Indiegogo, which kicked off, uh, I believe, two months ago? Or a month and a half ago? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And words, stuff, and things. We have the Indiegogo. Yeah. um, So who are, I guess... Who who specifically are the are the musicians that are going, and then who outside of that is also involved with or could be considered part of Music Westria? Um, as it stands right now, and pending you know car accidents or any other tragedies, which let's hope to fucking God do not happen in the next two fucking weeks. Um, it's going to be myself, Pony One Kenobi, Don Devore who is um, a little bit lesser known in the fandom, but he's fucking fantastic. He's a Seattle native, and he uh, was featured on the Seeds of Kindness album. Mm-hmm. Um, also on the tour is Replacer, who is flying out from New Zealand to do this, and is using it essentially as his transportation between Everfree Northwest and BronyCon. And... Fenning is on the tour, Automatic Jack is on the tour, Silva Hound, and Mike the Microphone. And I don't believe I missed anyone. Now, Shamrock, I knew that uh, a few days ago when we were kind of discussing Musiquestria as a whole, you were kind of, uh, we were both baffled about looking at your schedule and we're wondering uh, where Brony, like, is BronyCon a stop on the official list? And if so, are any of you you know, kind of taking a side jaunt to make it to the con, or are you just not even stopping the tour to keep it rolling? Um, it's, um, 
We made BronyCon sort of an unofficial stop. Same with Everfree Northwest, just because um, it just so happened that a lot of the people who were involved with the tour were performing at those two conventions anyway. So I'm performing at BronyCon, Pony1 Kenobi's performing at BronyCon. Um, really, the only two people who don't have their a set at BronyCon as well as on the tour are Automatic Jack and Don. Everyone else is performing. So it's not an official Music Questria stop, but we tried to make it so it coincided with the tour route just so that everyone who um, needed to go there was able to. That being said, I believe we are currently in the process of getting a show just before BronyCon at Washington, D.C. for those in the area who aren't able to go to the convention. And then after BronyCon, we have a show in Boston, which is booked, and we're currently trying to get a show in New York City just before that. Well, excellent. And, uh, you know, I'm not sure, you know, Tarby, you've been you've been playing music for a whole lot of years now, and have you been in many, uh, you know... Just first off, I guess, have you been in many kind of bands or projects of this sort of idea or scale? Maybe not to the scale of ten people, but, you know, a small group of four that would, you know, regularly kind of leave the Seattle area and go and play more music. Have you ever been in kind of a a situation like that? Kind of. Um, I actually moved out to Seattle a year ago for Everfree Northwest. Um, back to the whole coinciding thing, I figured, you know, spend the one-way ticket to go over here and just make it when I moved out. Um, before then, I actually lived on the East Coast in Rhode Island. And a common thing to do would be to go up to Massachusetts or to Connecticut to do a show. In fact, um, I've been in uh, a couple of bands, not too many, um, but one of them, which was called uh, The Random Band, actually, silly name. Random uh, Band, love it. Yeah. yeah it's, we would do shows at bars and stuff, cl- uh, small-time clubs, um, all around the that sort of New England tri-state area. And another band I have um, had uh, first time, which was kind of like a pop-punk outlet, ended up performing at, um, for those in the Massachusetts area, uh, you'll probably recognize it, the Palladium in Worcester, Mass. Um, that was fun to perform at. But yeah, so it's, I haven't really gone far. Uh, to be completely honest, the furthest I had traveled by car to go to a show was uh, the first BronyCon I had attended to, which was the one... Um, my brain is telling me January? Like a while back, <laughs> I think that sounds uh, right. Yeah, one of the was, older ones. Yeah, it was before it started. It was when it was at the Pennsylvania Hotel. I think it was before it started doing in convention centers. So oh, okay, I think that yeah. is right then. Winter Brony yeah. Con January. Well, uh, anywho, we've got so, a whole bunch of people. Oh, you can go by all well, means. Keep going. Uh, oh yeah, I was just gonna say, like New York had been up until this point the furthest I had traveled for a show so oh, okay gotcha. this is not gonna say a bit out of my league but this is definitely a big jump from what I'm used to and I think it's... yeah I think that's the same for everyone else who's on this well I'm sure you all you're all stoked and I bet it's gonna be uh, quite the experience for everyone I'm sure that you know none of these musicians are exactly used to a full uh, full scale US tour um, that, that's, that's just not something that most people just kind of go and do during the early part of their life. But it's awesome to see you guys all getting out there and fucking living the dream. So with that, I mean, there's nine guys here. You're all, you know, some of you are relatively kind of similar. I mean, I know you're warm and acoustic. You know, you've got your guitar rocking out. I know Pony won a lot of times has his bass and he's jamming. You know, what are we looking at as far as, you know, musicians that might be pairing to perform together and who is going straight up solo? Oh, as it stands, um, all the live acts, uh, so Don, Replace Her, myself, and Pony and Kenobi, are all in sort of a super group, I guess you could call it loosely, um, situation where we're all sort of pitching in on everyone else's sets. Uh, as it stands, Fenning, uh, Mike, Silva, and Automatic Jack have their own individual sets, but the rest of us are all joining in. I'm playing lead guitar on, I think, every single one of the live sets. So for Don, myself, for Pony One Kenobi, and for Replacer. Uh, Don is playing keys on my set, 
and on some of Pony One Kenobi's set, as well as doing guitar and lead vocals for his own. Automatic Jack is performing drums on all four sets, and Fanning is joining on guitar for mine, and Pony One Kenobi is switching back and forth between bass and guitar for the four sets. So we're all sort of pitching in wherever we can. I mean, it's. I was talking to Jack uh, a couple of weeks ago when we first got together the songs that we wanted to learn for the tour, just so that we're not playing the same set list over and over every night. It would get really stale really quick. And we were joking about the fact, in all, we each of us had to learn something like five, five and a half hours of material to do this. So, and that's quite song, impressive. Yeah, yeah that's, that's pretty intense. Multi instrumental stuff. Um, you know, some of us are playing keys for one set, jumping onto bass not only for another set, but just maybe for one song in that specific set. So it's a bit. It's something that we're pro- that we're definitely going to have to iron out in rehearsals, which are thankfully starting next week before we head out. But I'm confident that with the amount of time that we've put towards learning everything, that we should be able to pull it off. Well, that yeah. sounds. I mean that sounds like just the best stacked group of you know brony musicians that you could get, that you could get for that kind of super band as you called it. So uh, you know you'd mentioned you're learning five and a half hours of you know multiple instruments, so many different songs to get ready for this tour. Um, I gotta ask though, are you guys do you have any plans of uh, you know you got all these musicians together at least uh, as far as the super band is concerned? Are you gonna think about writing any songs and performing them? on tour, or are you just going to say, you know, to hell with that, we've got way more material than we would ever need to tour with, and we're just going to roll with that? Well, um, if we don't end up doing that, then, as you said, we do have plenty of material to be able to work with. I know that I've expressed interest in doing so, and uh, Pony and Kenobi is very, very interested in doing that on the road, but... um I guess as it stands, it's just a matter of seeing what happens. If we end up writing a track, which is completely and utterly possible, then it'll happen. We might record it when we get back or release it live as something. But it's just a matter of seeing how things play out at this point. But it's definitely an option. It is definitely something that we have looked into and that at least a couple of us are interested in. So I I guess wait and see. I'm just saying I can picture it in my head seeing, you know, the four or five of you guys crammed in a van, jamming out, writing songs on the road. You know, that just, it's just something so foreign in the brony scene so far, but it just sounds so, you know, utterly badass on every level that I don't know how. You guys could do 90 things wrong in our perspective and still kick ass while, you know, of course, you guys don't want to do anything wrong because you want to come back and do it again next year. But I'm definitely looking forward to it, even if you're not coming through my state. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it too. This is um this is a major jump for the music scene, I'll be completely honest. Like we went from doing uh you know, no offense to the people who were running, you know, the original Brownie Con that I went to, but you know, something which was on par with a cl- like a bar gig, you know, in terms of the sound and stuff to potential full on concert like setup. You know, I've seen the setup for Everfree Northwest. It's it's intimidating, as is the descriptions I've gotten for the setup at BronyCon. You know, it, it went from, you know, just, oh, let's get a PA in here so that they're audible to let's make it so that this is something on par with professional there. And then so we went from that to having like festival type musician setups you know at the latter half of the conventions to now a full scale tour which again has a professional rig has a professional setup which um actually the sound guy Nathan he's going to be riding along with us as well so awesome yeah uh speaking of the uh you know speaking of not going through certain places and going through other places I know we talked um uh off air while we had the break um, here about the route. Could you tell us um, for all the the listeners where you guys are starting, when, um, what the stops are along, and you know, uh, effectively where you're going to sort of end up? Yeah, yeah, I can do that. No problem. It's one of the few things I'm certain on about this. Um, as it stands right now, we are leaving. 
for the tour after Ever Flew Northwest. Our first show, our first official date that's been booked so far, which just as a note before I get into this, we are planning on booking at least a couple of more dates before we kick this off. We're trying to cram in as much as we can. So as it stands right now, our first show is in Portland on the 9th. And then after that, we're going down to L.A. for, I believe, the 11th, where we're actually performing in Hollywood, uh, which is awesome. Uh, after that, our tour route brings us through Vegas, which is another city that we're trying to get a show in. After that, we go through Phoenix, Arizona. Um, we're going to drive through Albuquerque, through pretty much all of Texas until we get to Houston. Um, from Houston, we go to either, depending on the timing, um, either St. Louis directly or we'll stop through Louisiana if we have a bit of time. Um, next show date is Chicago. The next one after that, we're driving all the way back to down um, through Tennessee to Jacksonville, Florida, where we're actually performing at the college there, which should be awesome. That's going to be an outdoor gig in an amphitheater, which should be really cool. After that, up through Georgia, up through, you know, the East Coast, we'll hit Washington, D.C., we'll hit BronyCon when that hits. After that, as I said earlier, we have, we're going to be driving through Pennsylvania. Um, we're trying to get a show in New York City or close to it. And then after that, the end of the tour is on August 6th in Boston, Massachusetts. Actually, not Boston, Cambridge, Massachusetts at the Middle East Club. So. Sounds like uh, quite, quite the journey. <laughs> yeah, you know, from one one shore to the other, it's truly yeah. a U.S. tour, and uh, you know, you've got your major cities and your booked venues when you're going to play, but I'm sure you're going to be driving through a lot of prominent cities, um, just along the way where I'm sure Bronies are going to be, you know, you know, chomping at the teeth just to try to get a, you know, a look at whatever you might be caravanning in. Uh, so whether it be, you know, for fandom reasons or just for personal reasons, what are some of the stops that uh, you're looking forward to or planning on making that aren't really related to the tour along the way? Um, huh. I actually, I'm really looking forward to driving through Louisiana just because I've always been sort of attracted to that area. Um, and same thing with Tennessee. We have potential stops in Nashville and Memphis. Um, I don't know personally how those are going because, as I've alluded to before, I'm just a musician. I'm not the one taking care of the booking. That's Austin. However, um, we looked at both of those cities for potential stops. And um, I'm definitely looking forward to that specific area, Louisiana and Tennessee, either of those cities, personally. Awesome. Never yeah, been I'll down my... Or never been a down that area myself, so um, you'll have to report to me, tell me what it's like, whether or not I should go <laughs> <We'll do. laughs> to that whole region in the southern where? United States. I was going to say, KB, where? Tell me, just tell me where? how that is. Give uh, me, like, sum it up in three words. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. It's humid. I, and there's, <laughs> there's I was, I was fucking, I was going to say, KB, I was like, where have you been in the United States other than Colorado and Vegas? Fucking... Fucking of, I bet I bet Utah is like forty percent of where you've been in the United States. Yeah, yeah, kinda. <laughs> that sucks. Now I only travel for pony shit. So, <laughs> like Kansas, Vegas, Austin, fucking places. I, I swear to God that Kansas is a is a whole tier above Utah. <laughs> oh my God! At least you have gas. <laughs> it's true. We do have gas. It's true. I've driven through Kansas many a time on I-70. There are gas stations in that state. Yeah. Uh, Tarby, I, I'll, I'll warn you now, I don't think you guys are going to be driving through Utah um, during your tour at all. But in the event that you do, just don't. <laughs> are you sure? Because like, I personally... If you drive through Utah, immediately don't drive through Utah if you can <laughs> help it. Because you will run out of gas in whatever vehicle you're in. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Right, well, that that, that kind of sucks because I, I personally, one of the other places which I would want to go, which unfortunately is not on the tour route for this year, is Salt Lake City. So, I was I was gonna say the only about the only thing worth seeing in Utah would be uh, McCon. I think he, I think he's the only one worth seeing there. So, <laughs> McCon resides in Utah, so you could go say hi to him. Yeah. yeah. 
It's cool, surprise him, be like, yo, dude, it's me. <laughs> just like, show up like, on his doorstep with like a, an empty plate of crumbs on it or something like that. <laughs> Please, uh, can I have some more? You, you would definitely, you would definitely work. All we gotta do is like take out, you know, half, half the size of your body and like put, put one of those, uh, like a little tweed poor, poor person hat on you and give you like a crutch and you'd be a perfect tiny Tim. God. <laughs> It'd be great. You totally, yeah. I can, I could see it now. You almost seem to me like uh, you could, you could fit perfectly uh, in a movie or something as one of the kids on the side corner passing out the newspapers. The the newspaper boy, read all about it. <laughs> but you'd have your guitar too, so you'd be like, it would be like a musical where you play the kid passing out the newspapers. You'd be, you'd be musically making up stanzas of. Of read all about it. No, Shamrock. Fuck me, Equestria. Are you ready to go and make the next uh, Brony Broadway tour? I think we're <laughs> ready for this. Let's do it. Fucking YOLO, man. <laughs> this is this is it. I this think is we're ready for the big stage. <laughs> this is what we've been preparing for our <laughs> right, whole sorry, lives. Sorry, Barbie. We're gonna go talk about something else now. We're done. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. As... Tune in next week on CCF for. <laughs> Tune in next week for all kinds of fucking crazy shit. Um, and know, well, if, if Trey Parker or Matt Stone can pull out a Book of Mormon, I imagine what DJK and Shamrock could do. Oh my That's god. What I'm saying. It's That's what I'm saying. Oh anyway, my. Uh, uh, you know, music tours, especially ones all across a giant nation as big as the United States, they're not cheap. And of course, you guys are really looking for some funding. You had an Indiegogo going. Unfortunately, uh, according to the website, the time has expired. But there's still many ways to donate. You got a uh, ten thousand three hundred and forty-three of uh, your fifteen thousand dollar goal. So that's that's not bad by any means. Hope you know it's too bad you didn't reach it. But uh, according to this, you can still, of course, donate to help the campaign. Um, and you can email all of your donations directly to out of the dark at gmail.com. That's a relatively easy email. We'll throw uh, we'll throw that in the show notes or something if you're interested in donating. But what uh, what's the money really going to here, Tarby? I mean, there's so many things that people just don't even consider when, you know, trying to fund a tour, especially of this scale. It's the big things are transportation and venues. Um it's as it stands right now, a lot of the gear which we're bringing on is either being uh, loaned, being rented at supremely discount rates, or is stuff that we've already owned. However, um, in order to be able to pull this off, we need to rent a van, we need to rent a trailer in order to carry the equipment, and we need to be able to cover gas. And especially with a tour route like ours, that's a lot of gas, especially like for a 12-passenger van and a trailer. Yeah, but that's and definitely not the most fuel-efficient yeah, uh, plus, <laughs> plus, you know, on um, depending on the venue, you could be spending anywhere from a couple hundred to a couple of grand if you're going into something a bit more fancy. So a lot of the venues that we're performing at are not like, you know, massive clubs or anything like that. You know, it's stuff with maybe a hundred, hundred and fifty, even two hundred capacity room at the most, but it's still going to be costing us several hundred dollars to be able to rent each of these venues out and that also takes a big chunk out of the money that we raised so it's you know running a tour like this is not cheap in by any means that being said the if it weren't for the amount of donations that we've gotten if it weren't for the people who stuck around with us during the 24 hour live stream that we did and just supported us who promoted us spread the word to people like chatters who offered commissions for donations which just thank her oh my god and just all the help that we had when we were trying to raise money and all the couple the people who have donated since then after it because a couple of people have thank them um it's if it weren't for them, we would not have been able to do this. We wouldn't have been able to come even close. So it's just my eternal thanks, my eternal gratitude to every person who spread the link, to every person who donated even just, you know, a dollar, a couple of cents even. Because if it weren't for you guys, we wouldn't be doing this. So thank you. you know, like we said, you can still – the Indiegogo campaign may be over, but it's never too late to donate until really the tour is happening. And even then, I'm sure – well, they're on tour. Just run to just run to one of the places so, uh, and, and throw them your money. 
Yeah, just <laughs> throw money on stage. Here's my money. I forgot to donate. Yeah. Uh, well, but just, you just... can still send all of your donations to outofthedark at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. And you can also pick up that link at the uh, the Indiegogo project, Musiquestria hyphen tour hyphen 2013. Um, and obviously, don't forget their actual website, which is Musiquestria. That's M U S I Q U E S T R I A dot com. Um, on that site, there is a tour, just so you guys know, there is a tour page, which has a list of not only the current dates that we're performing and links to buy the tickets online, which, as a note, you're able to both buy the tickets online and at the door. However, the door, I believe, will be $12 as compared to the pre-sale of 10 if you buy them online. Um, also, as we get more dates, which we will get, we'll also be adding those dates to the site as we get them. So keep on a lookout for that. Keep a lookout at our Twitter, which is just at Musiquestria, um, our Facebook page, our Tumblr page, which is all linked off of that main site. We will be giving steady updates. You know, once we know something, you'll know something. Once something happens, we'll promote it out there. We'll let you guys know what venues are gotten, what times and dates, and everything. So Legit. Well, and I believe... Yeah, I believe there's also um, that donate donate link on music on the music Questry page. Do you know if that links back to Indiegogo or if that's directly to the uh, donation? Um, admittedly, I am not sure. I okay. can find out in ten seconds, though. <clears throat> um, right. it says the campaign is still over, but you can still help. So I imagine that it gets sent okay. to the out of the dark email. Yeah, it yeah. looks and like it's you just know, of the course. Page there. We'd love to get a lot of donations, get these guys more tour, you know, get more tour dates, get more cities, just help them out overall for gas, lodging, accommodations, all that expensive shit. And, uh, of course, you know, the more money, the more possibility, or, you know, it, it contributes to the success that this could have. And hopefully, um, you know, for a hope that we can see a music cluster at 2014 next year as well. That's a big thing that yeah. we want to, you know, that we're hoping for. And uh, with that, I think that's all the time we have. We're going to swing into another commercial uh, and music break here, I believe. So uh, thank you so much, Tarby, for coming by and uh, telling us all about Music Equestria Tour 2013. I am totally looking forward to it. I know all these cities are so fucking far away from where I live, but it's not even <laughs> a big deal because I'm still looking forward um, to just hearing about it. And maybe I will drive all the way to one of these cities to watch it. Maybe I will. We'll just That'd have be to awesome, see. man. That would be awesome. And thank you for having me. Seriously. <laughs> No problem, man. Alrighty, well, uh, with that, we're just going to go ahead and swing into our next commercial break here. So thank you once again to our guest, Harvey, and we will be right back here on Canterlock Crossfade. Celestia Radio, all pony, all the time. Bud Light presents Real Men of G. Real man of genius. Today we salute you, Mr. Over the Top Brony Guy. Mr. Over the Top Brony Guy. You don't care that the show is designed for five year old girls. You've watched every episode. I love you, Fluttershy. Your new neighbor just moved in from Soviet Russia. What would Pinkie Pie do? Communist party! We're not whining about Master Link X's channel being taken down. We're complaining. This is whining. Please make it stop! So crack open a tall, cold one, Mr. Over the Top Brony Guy. Because without you, Rainbow Dash would still be a heterosexual. Mr. Over the Top Brony Guy! Bud Light Beer, Anheuser-Busch, St. Louis, Missouri. Hey there, bronies. Need someone to talk to about your love troubles? Then listen to Lauren Goodnight and Stephanie Keir on 8-Bit Sex every Friday night at 10 Eastern on Celestia Radio. We'll take your frown and turn it up. Mmm. Hey, don't want to feel so energetic? Try Rainbow Dash! The energy drink for bronies really good tourists of the friendship! With all new flavors like Flutter Guy, Buttershy Energy, it's like adding kindness to an electrical storm! Sound the alarm, you're going to be uncomfortably cheerful. What's that? You want Pinkie Pie? Well, how about Pinkie Die? With parties, real, real parties. parties. 
friendship. Ah, you'll be good at it. It's an energy drink for ponies. Ponergy. These aren't your sister's ponies. These are Ponergy ponies. Turbo ponies. Caring energy, caring energy. Rainbow Dash, Rainbow Crash, Rainbow Cupcakes. It has more rainbow than your body has rainbow. You like so fast, so she'll be like, slow down. And you'll be like, fuck you. And kick her in the face with your pony legs. You have so much energy. Ah, energy. You'll be flying. All the time! Flying friendly, friendly, caring, friendly, sleeping, friendly, shipping, friendly, laughing, friendly, spawning, fillies! You'll have so many fillies! 400 fillies! Give Rainbow Dash to your fillies, and they'll be good at friendship! Make your fillies fly abnormally fast! They'll fly as fast as griffins! Griffin. Bunnies will watch them and think they're griffins! Griffin. They'll race as fast as griffins! Griffin. Against actual griffins! Griffin. And then it'll be a tie and they'll be deported back to Griffin, Griffin. yeah! Hey! Go with the sure thing! Don't gamble on your Ponergy! Fluttershy stare! By Rainbow Dash, the punishment for ah! friendship. Ah! His mission, Mad Matt Dog, I guess being she the guest of the Celestia Radio. Got Coppelin, got Count. Still joined with none other than my co host and boss, DJ Shamrock. Yep, what's up, everybody? And uh, it's been a great show. Thank you so much uh, to the people we had on earlier. And uh, we're going to go ahead and kind of wrap things up, give you an introduction to what we might be talking about next week. And of course, telling you how you can stay up to date on everything Celestia Radio and Kinder Lock Cross Fade related. Yep, we uh, um, of course had a good segment today. It was nice having Tarby on um, on the show talking about Music Questria, reminiscing a little bit on, uh, on, the, on the music part of the fandom. Uh, it's nice to really have an episode to uh, sort of commemorate all of those things that, uh, uh, that we've done with everything. Um, you know, here in the fandom and all the accomplishments we've been able to see. And, uh, it's, was, it was a good episode. I think, uh, hopefully everybody enjoyed it. Um, everybody in the chat, um, of course, shout outs to everybody. Uh, all my people here at Fiesta Equestria, um, that are hanging out with me from the Fob Equestria guys. We got Spazzy from DHN, um, Sandy's here from Bronyville. Um, and, uh, just all the, all the cool people have a few, See our people down here, uh, um, Derp Time and uh, fucking David and Swivel and uh, Nautis are all here. Um, so it was a good convention overall. Um, not looking forward to the 12 hour drive <laughs> uh, back to Kansas and then the eight hour overnight work shift uh, right after that. Um, certainly not looking forward to that. Um, but uh, next week we will be um, discussing the topic of conventions because we've had. Um, Fiesta Equestria here, um, and uh, we've got uh, as well the the Kansas Convention, um, you know Midwest Brony Fest. Uh, that's coming up at the end of, uh, I guess at the end of I don't even know is it July, end of uh, June? July. I can't even uh, I can't even end math. of July there Shamrock. Yeah, I can't even math right now with with fucking calendars. My days are so fucked up. Um, but uh, yeah, at the end of at the end of the month. Um, in July, and uh, KB, of course, is going to be coming over for that one. We're going to have a, a pretty good time. We're uh, going to do a live episode of Kinderlock Crossfade. That's going to be fun. Uh, we are a live in person um, episode. That's going to be that's going to be interesting. It'll be uh, interesting to figure out how to finagle our equipment as well. Um, well, I'm bringing all my shit, so it's going to be well, that's great. Good. We can, but I mean, we can have like five uh, mics set up all <laughs> nice and fancy style in your apartment. We'll have to we'll have to steal some stuff from the convention. Uh, <laughs> oh, of course, smoke they... machines, lasers. Oh yeah, I, th- I think my room could use a laser. Oh yeah, well it'll be they it'll won't be, miss it. It'll be, it'll be fucking awesome. Um, <laughs> of course, but what's Q-com. the bi- what's the what's the big show that we got coming up after uh, after Midwest? And then, if, well, of course, after Midwest, we've got you know BronyCon, the big one. Um, you know, the week the week after, of course, I told those Midwest people. I said, "Guys, don't do that. Uh, <laughs> don't put your convention the week before BronyCon. No one's going to come." Um, but it's still a nice excuse for us to uh, to get together. Um, but yeah, BronyCon, it's going to be fucking huge. It's going to be massive. Um, all sorts of people expected to be there. Um, we have got officially fifteen media passes for Celestia Radio. We are. Uh, by far and large, um, we're an army. We are we are the biggest yes. media outlet at BronyCon um, by by a margin. Uh, <laughs> uh, 
Uh, we're definitely a force that's going to be there. Um, I'm just trying to think off the top of my head who all is going to be there um, from CR. We've got myself. Um, I believe PH Pony is going to make it down. Obviously, you, QCOM. Um, I can't remember. Perry, was he going to make it or not? I can't remember. Uh, I believe Perry is going to be there, from what yeah. I've heard. Um, and uh, I know I know some of the folks, um, some of our other DJs that we've... I pretty... Yeah, I'm, I'm fairly certain Calcos is going to be there. Um, I know that uh, both Cider and uh, Thornair um, are going to be... Or, sorry, I think I got that name wrong. Thorlane, right? Thorlane. Thorlane's the musician. I get those I get those two <laughs> fucking mixed up all the time. Um, Thorlane and Cider are going to be coming over, bringing quite a lot of equipment. Um, of course, Void's going to be flying over from Germany. Um, of course, Cider and Thorlane flying in from Australia. Um, so we got quite the international uh, amount of people that are flying in for CR. Um, and then uh, Void, Thorlane, those both bringing a lot of equipment. You're going to be bringing some stuff, probably. Um, or sorry, you're not going to be there. I I keep forgetting. Um, Uh, uh, but you're going to be, you're going to a concert that week, right? uh, Yeah. I'm going to go see a rush concert instead and not spend thousands and thousands of dollars on a convention. (laughs) Yeah. See, that's the, that's the thing. Relatively, I'm going to spend a few hundred on more of a meet up in Kansas. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I mean, why not, you know, get together, you know, toke it up, have some fun. Um, you know, it's going to be pretty laid back, chill at the chill at the house for a while um mm-hmm. let let qcom figure out that that midwest brony fest convention exactly thing. just let qcom do it that is that's the whole goal that's exactly celestia what radio QCOM let, do? let qcom do everything <laughs> um and uh but uh, of course he's gonna be there lauren uh good uh one of my uh, favorite voice people um and of course her show i love it um good night sex that's they're gonna be there her she and her co-hosts um, are going to be at BronyCon. Um, I think QCOM's co-hosts as well for Tree Time are going to be there. Um, I'm, I feel like I'm missing some people. Um, it, it's so many that you'll just have to wait and see. If it's 15. I, I know the number. The number is 15. <laughs> um, you know, and uh, I'm pretty sure either Allegra, Allegro or Gig is going to be there or both. Um, and, uh, yeah. So it'll be... It'll be it'll be interesting. I'm I'm really excited uh, for that. Um, I believe last year's BronyCon we had six people there from CR. Um, it was me, PH Pony, uh, QCOM, my friend Ray counted as one. Strangely, um, we had him thrown in there. Of course, Pony Toast, who's no longer with us, um, he was there, and then Damos uh, was yep. there. Yep. Well, it's going to be a good crowd. Unfortunately, Boy, Damos is going to be there. Right? For this. It's time for us uh, to kind of wrap up this show. Uh, So with that, you can catch every episode of Kid and Lock Crossfade recorded and re-uploaded to the Celestia Radio YouTube. We'll have it up by tomorrow so you can listen to this very episode and all of our previous ones. And by all, I mean that one episode that we've done so far. You can check it out on the CR YouTube. Of course, while you're there, feel free to subscribe to us. Uh, We have a YouTube channel with all of our interviews and special events uploaded there. You can like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter at Celestia Radio. We've got a Tumblr. We've got a Reddit. We've got all sorts of shit. And you can find us on all of it. Absolutely. And, of course, uh, don't forget to tune right here to Ponify.me. That's right, Celestia Radio. All pony all the time. Uh, We've got shows pretty much all the time, as as our our motto says. Um, And also, don't forget... Uh, about Canterlot TV, our TV station here um, on the radio, and uh, you can get to that by going to ponify.me forward slash ctv and checking out the shows there. We've got a show schedule up for that um, and all kinds of awesome stuff. Uh, we provide convention coverage as well through that. And, of course, don't forget about our own special show right here, Canterlot Crossfade, where censorship can go FCC itself right here on Sundays, 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. It's a two-hour program, 7 Eastern, and that's midnight for all you European folks out there. Don't miss us for next week's episode uh, where we talk about um, everything convention-related from the top to the bottom uh, and maybe some tips for those of you that are new to the convention scene uh, that might be interested in what you should be prepared for when braving the adventures of 
the Brony Fandom in Convention Forum. Thanks so much for joining us, and we'll see you next week here on Candlelock Crossfade. This shit's divine. It's like the singing of fucking angels. Shouts out to Clever Pony. Shouts out to Pinkie Pie Swear for the beat. What up? Actually, I, I changed it a little bit. Uh, yo, this joint's called, uh, I forget, uh, Pony Swag. Did you enjoy the show? Want to catch even more batshit antics next week? Well, tune in next Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for another installment of Canterlock Crossfade with hosts DJ K. Brony and DJ Shamrock. Only here on Celestia Radio.